the wild geese were getting closer and closer to their hometown. After flying hard for several days, they finally saw the beautiful La Bolin on a sunny afternoon. Martin flapped his wings happily and circled in the sky. They were obviously late. The other birds were busy building their own houses. Oscar also began to direct the wild geese to find a suitable place to build a new home for himself. Martin and Janice excitedly built their nest. Neil decided to build a decent house. He first drew a square on the ground, then cut the branches into four small pillars and inserted them into the four corners, respectively. Then he found reed leaves to surround the pillars and weaved the roof with thin and soft branches. Swallows also helped bring wet soil and covered it on the roof to block the sun. Soon, all the wild geese built their own houses, and Martin and Janice moved into their new homes. Next to them was Neil Newhouse. One fine day, Oscar decided to hold a wedding for Martin and Janice. Everyone was busy looking for wild fruits, catching fish and insects to make a sumptuous dinner. Neil picked many small flowers and made a beautiful garland for Janice. At the wedding, the bride shyly snuggled into Martin's wings and looked very happy. Days passed day by day, and soon Janice gave birth to five lovely goslings. The inexperienced couple were happy and worried at the same time. However, Oscar is experienced in raising little ones. She was busy all day instructing Janice on how to feed the goslings, and when they could go into the water. One day, Neil heard Martin and Janice arguing, and he hurried to the next door. It turned out that they were arguing about what to name the five goslings. Neil said, How about calling them Uke, Cake, Makey, Nick, and Vic? Martin and Janice were very satisfied with these names. Although the five little guys broke out of their shells almost at the same time, Uke often behaved like a big brother and ordered his younger brothers and sisters, and the little guys who were not convinced would start fighting. Neil often ran to separate them. On this day, the sun was shining brightly. Martin and Janice decided to let the children learn to swim in the water. The goslings rushed to the lake and waited happily. Janice went into the water first to demonstrate. Martin pushed the gosling to the water's edge and told them, Be brave and learn from your mother. The little guys were walking up and down the shore, but they didn't dare to go into the water. Martin got angry and pushed Yuke into the lake with his wings. Yuke nervously flapped his little wings, kicked his calves, and struggled. Finally floated on the water. In less than a minute, he was swimming around in the lake. Yuke was very proud. The younger brothers and sisters were not convinced, so they also jumped into the water and swam towards the lake with their soles of feet. They scrambled to swim faster than the other. Neil looked at the lively family and wanted to go swimming in the lake. Suddenly, a huge shadow shrouded their heads. Neil looked up and saw a ferocious eagle swooping over with its wings spread. Neil immediately shouted to Martin, Hurry and protect the goslings! An eagle is coming! I'm going to find Oscar to help! He shouted as he ran. The wild geese all poked their heads out of their nests. When they saw the eagle, they all returned to their nests as if nothing had happened. When Oscar arrived at the lake, the eagle was standing next to Martin's family. Martin and Janice tightly surrounded the goslings, looking at the eagle in horror. Oscar smiled and greeted the eagle. Golgo, don't scare these new friends. How are you lately? The eagle went up to Oscar and hugged him deeply, saying, Mother Oscar, I miss you very much. Neil and the Martin family were very surprised. This fierce eagle calls Oscar mother. Before Neil could ask, Oscar introduced to Golgo. These are our new friends Neil and Martin's family. They flew here with us. Then everyone gathered around the lake. Oscar begins to tell an old story. Many years ago, there lived a couple of eagles here, and all the birds tried to stay as far away from them as possible. When Oscar flew here to build his nest, he chose a reed bush not far from the eagle. Although eagles are formidable neighbors, they can also serve as guardians for wild geese. Other ferocious birds never dared approach the wild geese. But Oscar will always be on guard against the neighbors. 
Every day at dawn, the eagle couple will fly out to hunt. When they fly away, the wild geese can move around in the lake with confidence. If an eagle couple is seen circling over the valley, the wild geese have to stay in their nests. One day at noon, Oscar was waiting in the reeds for a long time, but did not see the eagle couple flying back until the next day. Oscar wondered what had happened to them, so she decided to fly to the eagle's nest to have a look. Not far from the eagle's nest, Oscar heard a sharp and pitiful cry from inside. She looked closer with some fear. In a heap of bones and feathers, a clumsy little eagle was screaming in despair. He has sparse fine hair, a few hard feathers just sprouted from his weak little wings, and his curved pointed beak is exactly the same as his parents. When the little eagle saw Oscar, he said domineeringly, Give me food quickly! Give me food quickly! Oscar was angered by his rude request and said, I am not your nanny, your parents. Where? The little eagle also asked, Where are my parents? They haven't been back for two days and I miss them. Oscar felt that the little eagle was very pitiful, so he flew out to find food for him. When she put a big fish in front of the little eagle, the little eagle said dissatisfiedly, I don't want to eat this kind of thing. My parents will give me fat and fragrant lamb. Oscar pecked the little eagle's head twice with his beak and said sternly, You have to keep in mind that your parents may never come back again. If you don't want to starve to death, just eat it. He looked at Oscar aggrievedly and ate the fish. From then on, Oscar flew to the eagle's nest every morning, noon, and evening. She brought fish, frogs, and bugs, and the little eagle ate them obediently. Slowly, the little eagle began to call Oscar mother, and Oscar also named him Golgo. When the little eagle grew up, Oscar said to Golgo, My child, you have grown up. You must learn to fly and take care of yourself. Golgo was very brave. He looked down at the edge of the nest. Then he jumped boldly. At first he turned somersaults in the air, not knowing how to fly. Oscar shouted loudly, Spread your wings and rush forward. The little eagle flapped its wings and flew slowly into the wind. In the summer, Golgo lived with the little wild geese. They caught bugs in the valley and listened to Oscar's stories. Slowly, the little eagle felt that he was also a wild goose. He always jumped into the lake and swam with them, but every time he choked an oka had to drag him out of the water. When the little wild geese learned to fly, they followed Golgo and flew everywhere. The other birds were frightened and ran away when they saw the fierce eagle. The little wild geese thought it was fun to follow Golgo. Gradually, Golgo grew into a strong and brave eagle. When the wild geese flew back to the south, Oscar had to say goodbye to him. From then on, every spring, when the wild geese returned to Labolin, Golgo would spend the whole summer with them. When Oscar finished telling this story, Neil and the Martin family were no longer afraid, and the little guys circled around Golgo curiously.